Thank you for joining us. My name is Christopher Downs from Co-op Life. If you're just tuning in, uh, we get together once a month and we talk about higher education, recruitment, and marketing. And I'm joined here with Mark Frechette from We Do Marketing. He's been a consultant of ours. Uh, he's been on the show before in the past, yeah. and actually the last show we did, you joined us, and we talked about uh, creating culture through your digital marketing experience. Yeah, it was very much the warmer side of marketing, right? right? It's it's it was it was. Uh, what was it? it? Was culture was the was the word of the year was the trigger for that one? Right, for 2014. Specifically, that you had this blog post that got featured on LinkedIn, and and hundreds and hundreds right. and hundreds and hundreds of reads later, uh, we were like, hey, let's right. let's make that the topic of the episode. So my goal here thousands of reads, hundreds, thousands. <laughs> no, <laughs> kind of. <laughs> uh, but the, the 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 so my goal here is yeah, we're gonna talk about a lot of things. I think we're talking we're talking the nerdier side of marketing today. We're talking about actually being able to measure and gauge your digital marketing efforts. So yeah. our last conversation was more an altruistic approach. Um, adding culture to what you're doing digitally, whether that's a revamp of your virtual tour, a more aggressive social media strategy. Um, every student buys into the campus culture, and we know that. And we know that an on-campus tour uh, is the holy grail of the admissions process. But how can we take what they experience on an on-campus tour and bring it into your digital marketing efforts? Yeah. So that's good and all, and it sounds great when you're pitching it to your finance committee or budget meeting, yeah. but at the, end, at the end of the day, we're gonna need to talk about conversions, measurements, and the actual value you're getting from these um, yeah. efforts. And that's why you're here, is to talk about um, giving you know, the folks that are listening, whether it's a director of marketing or an admissions director, some ammo to go into a meeting and say, here's what we're getting out of this. Yeah. Um, so then let's start and talk about what are the major um, things to begin with to sure. kick off that measure. Yeah, so the first, I mean, this is kind of before you get into it, right? But the first thing is you want to know, like, kind of why data is going to be so important. Like, what are you expecting to get out of it? Um, and, and by what do you, like, are you expecting to get, you know, of course, marketing insights and stuff like right. that. But for, for marketers and for admissions professionals, there's a really good second reason to do it. And it's because where so much of your activity is becoming digital or digitally oriented or digitally supported, right? So we know the on-campus tour is still in person, but so much leading up to and coming off of that is right. digital. Um, it's a car ride home, too. Exactly. What are they going to say in the car ride home? What are they going to go look at on the car ride home? And what, what analytics will let you do across multiple channels anyways, is is let you prove, or at least try, uh, get close to signals for proving the value of your marketing efforts, uh, which translates to, here's why I need this marketing budget. Um, In that, the one thing we're trying to do here. Yeah, so it's one thing to have analytics to say like, oh yeah, we did good, or oh yeah, you know, uh, give me a raise, and yes, analytics comes with all of that stuff too, but more importantly, than, than personal accomplishment is you can get the budget you need and fight to keep it. Okay, so I just, I, in the middle of February, I wrote a blog um, about three recruitment truths for those advocating change within their institution. Because um, in, in many institutions, whether it's higher education or businesses, sometimes when you're fighting for change, you have early on borders and late on borders. And higher education is no different to that. Yeah. So I talk about what students are looking for. And there's things that are obvious. Obviously, um, mobile is huge. Yeah. Uh, personalization is huge. huge. All those things are important. And that goes into effective marketing strategies. So then, when we're measuring them, we've identified our goals. Yeah. What would some of those goals be for higher education? Sure. So yeah, so you kind of got four steps going into an analytics project, right? First, you need to identify your goals. Uh, next, you've got to focus on the accuracy of those goals and of your data. Uh, and accuracy in analytics, we don't necessarily mean um, IRS level reporting, but we do mean uh, accurate enough to provide good insights. Right. Um, you also want to identify um, the value of each goal as it applies to your business, as it applies to, to admissions and, and getting new students in. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, or, or, you know, there's some other audience on here as well, getting more donations and stuff like that as well. Uh, and then, of course, there's the, my favorite step, which is the, that cycle of analyze and pivot, analyze and pivot, okay. right? Because having all the insights in the world doesn't mean anything. Yeah, yeah, if you're like, like, well, I know what to do. I choose not to do it. Yeah, nothing will kill the status quo faster than having the data. Um, so the first thing you need to do is identify your goals, and that was a good question. How it applies to uh, to you is, of course, you have uh, one goal. We can do a door of the explorer. Style. I say we just use let's say use applications. Let's say sure. that is the um, common denominator for goals. It is, um, and and so. Uh, so how do you track applications online? Well, 
you probably have an online application, or at least the start of the process is an online application. What's tricky and where a lot of higher ed marketers kind of give up is they go, yeah, but the application process doesn't finish online, so I can't track it. And that's kind of sort of true, unless you're spoiled and have an amazing CRM. Um, you kind of lose it there, but what you can do is use signals. And again, the point of analytics is to power smarter marketing decisions, uh, not to provide IRS level reporting. So develop a signal for that goal of online uh, of applications. So here's, here's kind of the, the easy math way of doing it, right? If you have received, we're going to say a very small number, if you've received 100 applications through your website, or 100 starts of the application. This is for the sake of easy math. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hopefully you've gotten far more. The, um, what you're looking for to come out of that is if you've got, of those 100 applications, you took 10 of those students, um, then you would count an application uh, as one-tenth of a goal. An online application is one-tenth of a goal. Now, Google Analytics, of course, uh, which is what we'll talk about a lot today, you, 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 you basically just say, it's a goal, so it'll keep ticking up. Right. Right, um, but it's important to know that that's one tenth of your actual goal, uh, and we'll get into why that's important when we talk about valuation in a second. Okay, okay. So then you identify your goals, and we're going to use applications. Yeah. As the um, you know the focal point. The holy grail. The holy grail. Yeah. Now there's two things that I think lead into that. There's the focusing on accuracy, yeah. and then there's also um, assists. So what are some assists that can lead to applications? And then yeah. how can you weed out your analytics to just focus sure. on that audience? Yeah, so the first thing is accuracy. And that, uh, is, to put simply, there's a couple of things that will really mess up your, your tracking um, and really mess up your setup. Now, you're probably using Google Analytics. Uh, and the reason we can guess that is because it's free and it's the most widely used. Right. That's why we'll use as an example. Um, one, not having the form, the online form process, even connecting up with Google Analytics, uh, that would ruin it because, okay. of course, you'd have accuracy of nothing because yep. nothing's coming in. Yep. But on the, on the flip side of that, if you haven't yet developed a mechanism for taking existing students out of that goal funnel, uh, what you're going to feel like is you're going to feel like you have a very low admission rate. Um, so improve your accuracy by either A, drilling down further using funnels. So of people... Is that in design? Are funnels in the design of the website or is it more in the analytics side? It's a little bit of both, right? Okay. So if you have a page called applications, then you right. can kind of presume, uh, all right, very few students are going to come to this. So I'm only going to worry about of the people who get to my application page, what's the conversion rate on that? That's not perfect, but that is one way of doing it. Uh, my favorite way, and most colleges just kind of luck into this, is... The reason you have so many existing students coming to your site is you probably have a way of going to that site and then logging in and then they go into their student portal, right? right? Whether it's Blackbot or whatever. Mm -hmm. So uh, what you want to do is uh, work with your IT department um, to track that. So track the students that log in. What that will let you do is then remove those students using filters um, from your Google Analytics. Uh, so if you, you want to narrow in on that audience and perspective. Students. Yeah, yeah, that's one we won't cover in here, but if they call you, uh, yeah. we can connect. Well, the reason I asked about design is because at Quad Life, um, we offer a mobile app, web based mobile app. Right? Yeah. So it's the design of an app, but works on through the internet. So it's not in the app store. However, when you first log on on a phone, yeah. you have your options perspective student, current students, parents, online. Yeah. And from that, they're given a customized experience based on what audience they are. Exactly. However, what you triggered a thought for me is, is that it also allows you to have more accurate Google Analytics because the experience off the start is funneled. Yeah, and Google Analytics has a really, really, this is way more in depth than I wanted to go in this area. Google <laughs> Analytics has a really, really cool tool called User Variable. Okay. Um, and what User Variable will let you do is apply a label to this person's device so that the next time they come in, it's already telling Google Analytics whatever was the contents of that label. So if somebody used this, uh, used their laptop, their person, if a student used their personal laptop, came in and logged in, we would use Google Analytics to apply that label to that user, and the next time they come in, it'll always track them. But you don't have to do it from the login. You can do it from Quad Life. And I know you say, oh, Quad Life's not on the App Store, but you know what makes that great? Well, it's a, it's a benefit of art, and on our side, we think it's an advantage. Well, it is. It is for many reasons, but it really is for uh, data analysis right. tracking. Because it's a web-based app, 
it ties in so cleanly with web-based analytics like Google right. Analytics right. that you can actually see and, and, and do that whole right. journey. Um, so yeah, I think just by making that decision, I know that's not why you did it, but right. it, it's a huge added benefit because tying a normal app back to analytics, it's possible. It's just a little bit of a nightmare. Right. <laughs> so then that brings us to our next conversation. We, we talk about focus on accuracy, so you're narrowing you know the the pool of what you're you're analyzing. Yeah. But now let's talk about identifying KPIs, your key performance indicator. Sure. And I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, the word assist go into that. So if my they number do. one thing I want is applications. What are some KPIs that can effectively help me gauge how I'm doing in that? Area? Sure. So there's there's two kinds of ways of tackling the assist and key performance indicators. Uh, key performance indicators in this case would be the the items that tend to lead up to an application. So if you notice looking at your Google Analytics, once you start applying goals, you can really see this. But even now, you probably have a good idea of it. Go with the notion, go with that gut feeling. It's mm -hmm. probably pretty accurate. Um, is if somebody comes in online, signs up for an on-campus tour, we know that of that, a certain percentage is going to turn into a right. lead. So, so use that other goal. You know, you. you Make sure you set goals for so contact forms, for example. Contact Could forms, schedule, schedule scheduling visit. tours. Those are qualifying um, conversions that can actually help yeah. You. And feel free to add those right. into the fun, uh, into your goal set. You have twenty five goals in Google Analytics, so go crazy. What you don't want to do is confuse those assist goals or sub goals or funnel touch points or whatever you want to call them. You don't want to confuse those with key performance indicators like time on site, like website engagement, like bounce okay. rate. Okay. And, and that's tricky because when you start setting up goals in Google Analytics, it'll invite you into it. It, it kind of like dangles in front of you like, hey, you know, you can set up as a goal somebody who spends more than three minutes on the site. That's not a goal, that's an indicator. And if you make it a goal, it's going to screw up your numbers. Um, so, but that's another good one is if you're seeing people, once you set up these goals, you could say, here's the process, the ideal process for an online applicant. They come in from an ad, they land on this landing page. From this landing the page, page, and they go to the, the, the learn more. Exactly. And then they'd end up, and then finally step four. In Google Analytics, you can actually set that up as a funnel, those pages in that order. And what it'll do as a report is it'll say, here's how many people followed your ideal flow. Here's where people kind of jumped in through the windows, right? They came in through search or another campaign. They didn't start at the front door. They jumped in through the window. And here's where people are falling out, right? The right? design needs to remedy that and band-aid it and offer call to actions to bring them back into the funnel. Oh my goodness, yeah, because right. if you're looking at your website and you're saying like, holy cow, the page before they apply online has a 60% drop rate or an 80% drop rate. Right. Something oh. needs to change. Yeah, uh, immediately, because that's where you're losing 80% right. of the online app. Yes. Um, so yeah, that's and that's what we talk about with not just the. Um, I jumped ahead a bit there. Um, is identifying those those goals, but also using that insight to pivot. Take a look right. at those key performance indicators like uh, bounce rate and and right. traffic and the throughput of that funnel. So basically, your KPIs and your assists are going to help you figure out which ways to adjust and pivot. Mostly your KPIs, not to be confused with assists. Exactly. Your KPIs are telling you where there are maybe design flaws yeah. or funnel flaws, um, which you need to look at and then make adjustments. And I believe a lot of that has to do with call to actions. So yes, if you're missing usually. the appropriate call to action on an about page on your missions area of your website, yeah. the call to action needs to be at least to your three conversions that you're looking for. Yeah. The apply now, the schedule, visit, and a contact form. And the ways in which you deliver those call to actions, I think, can be tested through analytics to see yes. how they're working. Yeah. Um, and that leads us to the pivots and adjustment talking point about this, which you just touched on. Yeah. Now, we, we realize that. they got to make pivots. Now, let's say they made, they need a pivot, and that pivot actually might be um, something that might require a budget approval. Ooh. So how can we now value these conversions? Yeah. Here's the thing, marketers kind of universally, I think I think market marketers and administrative professionals, right? We're we're kind of we're really good with numbers right. and saying, you know, ten thousand applicants and stuff like that. Like that makes perfect sense to us. Um, but you might have found, I don't know if you've noticed this, when we talk to finance, they right. really are really focused more on revenues and dollars. It's not to say they don't appreciate words like applicants, but it's often an easier fight, for lack of a better term. Um, 
That's actually debate. a problem with the best term. Uh, it's often probably a better battle for your budget if you go in speaking their language, and that is going to be numbers. And that is where 99% of marketers in, in higher education kind of put their hands up in there and be like, I am not an online university. I cannot put tuition into my website. And that's baloney. Right? Again, the goal of analytics is smarter decisions. The goal of analytics is not to have IRS reporting at the end. So here's what you use. You use a tool called inferred value. Okay. And here's how inferred value works. So right away we had, uh, earlier on we talked about uh, if you were to receive 100 admissions uh, uh, applications and you admitted 10, then that form is one-tenth the value of an admission. So what's the value of an admission? What's the average lifetime value of a student, of a student. an enrolled student. That's the right. easiest way to Which do then it. you break down into the actual value per application. Exactly. So if, applica if you tend to have, for every 10 applications, one enrolled student, yep. you have a 10 to 1 ratio. Yep. And let's just say, for the sake of easy math, that your tuition is $30,000 a year, your four-year institution, right? So one in the lifetime of an enrolled student is 120000 Yeah. So if one-tenth of my applications gets me my, my enrolled student, each application is worth twelve thousand dollars in potential revenue. Sorry, I'm trying to do an no. It, math. It's, it should have been easier. <laughs> I'm the common core was not good at that. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I'll get there. So yeah, but that's that's pretty much how but the math just works. Just add, add a number value to your conversion. And Google Analytics will let you do that right in their system, and that unlocks something really, really cool for you as a marketer and initiative admissions professional is now when you start looking at Google Analytics uh, and your reports, remember Google Analytics is telling you how your advertisements are doing if you're tracking by campaign. They're telling you what social media and email are playing a role in. Um, so they're telling you all this stuff. Now next to all of those, there's a number value. It's like you've turned your website into an e-commerce website so you can actually see how much revenue your different marketing channels and different campaigns are generating. This is huge, and once you do the hard work of figuring out um, how many of the online applicants, how many become, if you have a CRM, this is a matter of a single report. Uh, if you don't, this is a matter of an intern with Excel. And, and, uh, but once you do that hard work, it's one box. You say, online application, that's my goal. The value of this is $12,000, and you're done. Now, right away, as more people complete this goal, you'll start seeing that value show up. It is the most powerful thing you can do in Google Analytics. Uh, and it's amazing because it's only one text box and a save button. Wow. Um, so you don't even need to go to IT for it. So it's easy to implement. And it's it's super help, easy to implement. It'll help a lot with uh, validating. Exactly. Your request. Let's say, for example, you... Advocate a change. Exactly. Right. Preach. So let's say, for example, you've worked in a new virtual tour app, you've worked in a new mobile, mobile uh, experience, or you're working in a new email marketing right. campaign, or you've bought a new ad, however you want to do it, social media. Uh, all you do is you, you use UTM tracking and Google UTM tracking. Google's actually got a UTM URL builder um, that's super easy to use. And what it'll do is when somebody clicks a link made with that, it'll automatically fill in the information you want it to fill in in Google Analytics. So it'll say right away, it's this campaign, it's this source, it's this medium, so you can pull that report out fast um, and tell the difference between social media advertising coming from Facebook and social media right. promoted po uh, posting uh, right. coming from Facebook. So it's easy to use. It's super easy to use. Okay. Now, we're going we're gonna to sum things up here. We went over four major steps yeah. to, to engaging in and measuring your digital marketing efforts. So the first one. Do we have a budget for like a countdown to show up? One of these days we will. We'll get more viewers. Um, so to start, most important thing, obviously identify your goals yeah. first. Every school is unique, but at the end of the day, application to enroll students are probably number one. And then and find the ones that lead into and that. Find the assists that lead into that. And then obviously focus on accuracy. So that's your KPIs along with um, your assisted conversions. Yeah. Using KPIs such as bounce rate, page views, the amount of traffic you're getting to adjust your pivots, yeah. which means the next one, And make pivot. sure make sure everything's functioning right. You might have to work and with IT to make sure that right. like, the forms are actually right. collecting. 
and then at the end of the day, put a value to these conversions, yeah. a number value. Talk the language of the people around you in your finance meetings and your budgetary yeah. um, committees. So those are that's our take on things. I appreciate you coming by. Happy really to be appreciate here. Appreciate it. In the description box, you'll find my contact information along with um, Mark's. Make sure to uh, check us out on quadlife.com and at quadlife app on Twitter. Um, my email's in the description as well. Thank you very much for tuning in. Mark, thank you very much. Of for course, happy to be here, here, sir. Thank you so Always much, and thank you. Thank you, and we will see you next time. Cheers. And now we do the talk to each other thing until it dips to black.